Hello, from time to time I run across applications where users request to get a cross-distribution package. This is an example here um, and usually when I see this what I do is I suggest to the team doing the application to produce an app image because an app image really has a lot of advantages. For example, you can run an app image on many distributions, most of the common ones. It's really simple because one app is just one single file. There is no unpacking or installation necessary. You don't have to be root to run the package. And uh, what's also very cool about it is that your system entirely stays unchanged. No system libraries are touched. So whenever I suggest this, from time to time the upstream project decides to do an app image but more often than not uh, either not much happens or uh, people respond by saying yeah this would be cool to have but how can we get started. So today I want to show you what you can do as a user to send to your favorite upstream application project a pull request that will produce an app image of the software. And uh, in doing that uh, I will also show how to use tools like Linux Deploy Qt and how to upload the produced app images automatically to GitHub releases. Let's take a real-world example here and uh, this is not prepared. I'm entirely unprepared. I don't know what's awaiting me here, but I just stumbled across this Spark report uh, or feature request um, concerning the application Avogadro where it says a cross-distribution package for Linux is wanted. And I really would like to help here. So let's see what do we do. First of all, check out what type of framework the application is written in. And I'm just checking out the GitHub page here to see whether this is using some framework. Uh, what I see here is it's using CMake as the build system and it seems like, well, where is the source code? Let's have a look at the source code. Uh, it seems to be a C++ application, okay. Now let's see whether it's written in Qt. What I do for this is I just search for pro and if we find a file ending in .pro then that's a dead giveaway that we have a, a Qt application here. Let's see, .pro something showing up Actually, no. Let's see. Cute. Yeah, see? Here we see uh, a .pro file and this is a dead giveaway that Qt is being used. We also see it in some of the includes. So in this case it should be particularly straightforward to generate an app image for this application because we have specialized tools that can handle Qt very well. So let's start. First of all, let's see whether there is already a Travis file here. Uh, a file called .travis.yml, but actually there is none, so what I'm gonna do is create one. Create file, travis.yml, actually with a dot, like this. So to populate this, um, I could either write this file from scratch or I can use a template that is pretty usable to build upon. Now what the travis.yml file does, it uh, tells the service that will build the app image how to do this. And we're using a service called Travis CI for this and we will see this later. So what I do first, I just open a new window here side by side and I go to the Linux Deploy Qt project. Now on the home page of the Linux Deploy Qt project, if we scroll down, 
there is an example on how to use Linux Deploy Qt with Travis CI and that's exactly what we are gonna do. So to start out I just copy all of this here from the example and paste it into our new Travis YML file. Also I noticed what we saw before that uh, this Avogadro project is using CMake so I have to make uh, an important change here to the way the application is compiled because actually it's not using the QMake tool which is what our example here uh, assumes but rather CMake instead. So let's go back here and below the example there is a section about CMake where it says that we have to just exchange three lines on the left side with these three lines specific to CMake. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so next we have to look for app name and replace it with the actual name of the application which is Avogadro in our case. So copy this and just replace all occurrences of app name with the actual name of the application. So here, there, and here again. Now at this point we could already start compiling and just see what happens. Um, as a matter of fact let's just do that. Now if I just submit this file as is not much will happen. I will fork this repository um, but that's it. So to actually see some action coming out of this I first have to inform the Travis CI service that we want to build this project on Travis CI. So I will go to Travis dash CI sign in Now I click on my own name here um, to see the list of all the projects I am working on and it says syncing from GitHub here. This should already be activated. If not you can also click that uh, to start a sync. What this does is it really checks all your GitHub repositories and updates the list of available projects under your username. So once that is done what I do is I usually just copy the project name from here, Avogadro, copy that and I just jump directly to the corresponding page on Travis CI which is traviscorg dash my username dash and then the project name. If we go to that page it says this is not an active repository. If you get something else here then the sync didn't happen. But if you see this page and there is a button activate repository then everything went well. So let's click on activate repository. This is very cool. Hooray! Repository has been successfully activated. That's very cool. So there is one additional step. Once we start building this application on Travis CI. We also want Travis CI to be able to upload the application automatically to the GitHub releases page. To do that we need to tell Travis CI to use a GitHub token. To configure this go to more options, settings and then scroll down to environment variables. What we need to do here is to add an environment variable called Travis underscore token. And now we need to get from GitHub an actual token that we can paste here. To do that let's go to GitHub and the URL actually is github.com dash settings dash tokens. Now I cannot show you the actual page because there is some confidential information but suffice it to say that this page will contain all the tokens information that's needed um, to fill in the field 
value on this side. So I'm, I'm going to stop the video here while I get my token. Actually, if you have no tokens created yet on GitHub, you need to create one. And as far as I know, it needs at least the repo um, permissions. You can give it a little description and then generate a token by pressing generate token here. It's very important that you write down or copy the resulting token because you will only see it one time. So you need to save it somewhere. Once you have that token, all you do is you take the token and copy it over into this place over here. So this is the value for the key Travis underscore token. Once you have done that, we should be all set up. So what I can do now is go back to, well, let's go to build history here to see any builds that are being made. So let's go back to our .travis.yml file here and let's commit this press propose new file. Now what happens is automatically a new build should start on Travis CI as we can see here practically instantly a new build started and if we click on this we can actually see what's going on. So right now there is a build machine booting this can take some time until it's actually up and running because a new whole new container is starting in the background and is booting right now. In the meantime what we can do is go back to the GitHub page and most likely what we just created here initially will still need some tweaking. So what I do is click view here and then go to the patch one which is the branch we are working on currently and then we can already click the edit button because most likely we are going to do some additional edits in this file based on how the build on the right hand side is going. Speaking of which we can see in real time what the build is doing here and to make this a little bit easier you can click this button here follow log which will automatically make the screen scroll down as the build progresses. As you can see the build is running in a Ubuntu 14.04 machine. Right now the basic packages are being installed on that machine and in no time it should start building the Avogadro application based on our .travis.yml file. So a little while later I see red stuff here on the right hand side and that's not a good sign. It means that some errors have occurred and to understand what those errors are let's scroll up until the first occurrence of a red line which is here. So let's see what it says here right above the red line. It says make error could not find eigen3. So it means we are missing some packages. Uh, actually this happens if you try to compile something without reading the instructions. So what I'll do is I'll go back to the Avogadro project here and actually most easy would be to just search for apt. Usually somewhere in the documentation it says how to compile things and which packages to install. Let's see if we find something useful. No, let's search for apt. Yeah, uh, so it's not so straightforward apparently. So let's see whether there is real documentation. Read me, yes, read me, that's all cool. See install file for installation instructions, let's do that. I should have done this right from the beginning. So requirements, CMake, Qt, Open Babel. Okay, Eigen. Okay, so this is what we need to somehow get and install. question is where do we get this from? See what I like projects do is really paste the actual apt get command or rpm or whatever packaging system command uh, so that you can just copy and paste a working apt get line but apparently not all projects do this so now we need to search a little bit. So we need open bubble 
And the question is whether what we get with Ubuntu 14.04 is recent enough um, to compile this. So what I usually do is I'm searching for Open Bubble Trusty. Here we see the Open Bubble and it's 2.3.2. .2. Let's see what we need. Oh, that's good. So that seems to be suitable. But most likely we don't need Open Bubble, but Open Bubble Def. Does this also exist? Dash def. That doesn't exist. Okay. So, lip open bubble. Is there a def of this? Def stands for development, of course, and most of the time one needs those def packages. Lip open bubble def. There it is. Trusty. That's exactly what we need. So, this is something we should install. So let's go back to our .yml file and let's add this package to the list of packages to be installed. Also, it says here we need Eigen. Eigen version 2.0x. So let's see whether we can find that. Ubuntu trusty Eigen. Here we go. And um, there is lip eigen 2 dev, which seems to be what we need to install. So let's also paste this here. And just commit changes. Let's see how the next build goes. To do that, we can go to build history and yes, we see the second build is running. Let's see how that one goes. And sure enough, <coughs> and sure enough we run into another error as happens frequently when compiling stuff. This time it says, it still says could not find Eigen 3 which is a bit strange because we just installed it. So at this time it's usually trial and error and a lot of googling around. Um, this is not really app image specific but somehow uh, most of the time you compile stuff it's not gonna work right out of the box and you have to fuzz around. So in this case first thing we can do is copy that error and go back to the project and actually search for that error. Maybe someone else has already encountered uh, the same, but apparently that's not the case. Ah, here, four issues. So what does it say here? Cannot compile on Ubuntu 14.04, problem with Eigen. That's exactly the problem we're having. So let's see what this says. A lot, a lot of text. So I had the same problem. In order to fix it, I needed to uninstall Eigen 3 and install Eigen 2. The current version works through Eigen 3 compatibility. Whatever that means, let's see that we get Eigen 2. So let's get back to our Travis page and... Oh, actually we have lib Eigen 2 installed. That is a bit strange, so... Hmm. <laughs> See, that's why I don't like that they don't provide the actual apt get install command you need to compile this. Now I have to search around, which always makes me very impatient. Now while I'm searching I will pause this video because this actually has nothing to do with how app image work. Okay, turns out that I had to replace libeigen 2.dev with libeigen 3.dev and now the build actually got a lot further. As we can see the configure stuff all passed with a green line which is great and then the actual build proceeded. But here we run into another issue. What is it saying here? Okay, it is looking for lconvert. 
L convert from Qt4. So first thing I wonder is why is this using still Qt4? Shouldn't it be using Qt5? Let's check with the project what it says regarding Qt5. Qt5 two issues, Qt5 port. Will Avogadro 1 be ported to Qt5 at some point? Answer is all effort should go into making Avogadro 2 a suitable replacement. Okay, <laughs> so actually this is outdated software. There may still be advantage in having an app image of Avogadro 1 apparently, but it seems like it really needs Qt4, which makes things a little bit more compli complicated apparently. So what is elk convert and why don't we find it? Actually we can just copy this, go to packages, ubuntu.com, there is a search function, search the contents of packages, search And we see this is in the package Qt 4 dev tool. So we want to install that. Going back to our YML file, seems like we don't need um, to even get Qt 5 in this case. So let's get rid of that line. Hey, why can't I comment that? Yeah, press edit. So get rid of this and don't install Qt 5.9 but rather install Qt 4 dev tools. And let's see how that build goes. So new build is running and it's compiling along nicely. We are at 17% at the moment and that looks very very promising as far as the build goes. So it seems like we have a working Qt installation because otherwise probably it would have errored out by now. We're already at 21% of the compile process. And this time interestingly enough the build has succeeded up to the point that now we can see Linux Deploy Qt is being run on the application which is really a good sign. So let's see how this goes. Linux Deploy Qt takes the compiled application and really packages it inside an application directory which in turn gets converted into an app image. So if this succeeds, well if this would have succeeded then we would have a nice little shiny app image now but apparently there is still an error and the error is here in the Avogadro desktop file Namely, it doesn't pass validation. It says Avogadro desktop error value 1.2 for key version in group desktop entry is not a known version. This is because we are building on Ubuntu 14.04 here and that version of Ubuntu does not understand the value 1.2 in this key. The fix is rather simple. Let's go back to our project here. And now we need to make sure that we are in the branch that we are actually editing, which is called patch-1 in my case. And we have to find the desktop file that we need to change. I'm gonna assume that it is probably in, well, where could it be? In Avogadro, I guess, source maybe. Uh, icons, Mac, Windows, let's see, dot desktop. There it is, avogadro.desktop. And all we need to do is edit here the line version 1.2. Actually it's not needed. If we just remove that then we can be pretty confident.
confident that it will hopefully work. Commit changes. Over here, new build should be starting. And let's see how that one goes. Uh, by the way, we can also see from the previous build that the full build takes around 8 minutes. So again, I'm pausing the video here and we'll come back after 8 minutes. Now, this time, let's see whether Linux Deploy Qt actually succeeds building the app image. What Linux Deploy Qt does is it really rearranges the whole application directory so that the application is self-contained. And actually what we can see here is that yes, something has happened, but not quite what we wanted. So let's see what happened. Here when it says make SquashFS creating file system, that's a very good sign. It means the app image is actually being generated. Um, that's cool. Now, further down below, what we can see is the libraries that are dependencies in the base system. There shouldn't be something left being loaded from the base system that cannot be reasonably expected to be part of each target system. And what stands out here is this one. <laughs> we need to get rid of this one. This must be some Oh, probably a Linux deploy Qt uh, bug, actually. I will look into this later. But um, further down below, it should upload the app image. It doesn't do that because we made a stupid mistake when we named the application here. Of course, it's Avogadro with an uppercase A because that's how the app image is named, as we saw. So we really need to change this here. And with that, I hope that in the next build, the upload of the generated app image will succeed. And sure enough, this time it has worked. Um, the Avogadro build of the app image has been uploaded to GitHub releases, as we can see here in the build log. Now, if we go back to our project and then go to the releases tab, we see that sure enough, there is now a continuous build released 34 seconds ago that contains both an app image and a corresponding csync file, which is used for binary delta updates. Now let's have a look at the app image. Just click it, save it, and run it. And sure enough, Avogadro seems to be running just fine here. So let's see. I'm, I've never opened even this um, application, so I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing here. Oh. Look, there's a molecule. Wow, that is very cool. So yeah, it, it seems like Avogadro is running, which is very cool. And now is the time to, well, either inform the project that they can test it from this page here, or even send a pull request directly to the project. Let's do the latter. Now, um, to send a pull request, one thing I want to do is, actually, if I look at my own repository here, and if I go to this patch one branch that I have done and do a comparison, then what we will see is all the individual changes I have done. And there's quite a lot of them because I needed a couple of trial and error runs to get this thing working. Even though in the end it's just two files really that have been edited, namely this .travis.yml file has been added and this tiny little change removing one line from the desktop file has been made. 
But really, we don't want to have all of these edits show up in the history um, in the Avogadro project. So what I will do is, and this is a little trick, I will open a pull request against my own repository first, which means I select as the base fork my own clone of the repository, and now um, I will merge patch 1 into master inside my own repository. Let's call this app image. Create pull request. Now I have an open pull request on my own repository and the trick I can do here is instead of pressing merge pull request I can go to squash and merge. This is very important because now the eight commits from this branch will be combined into one commit in the base branch. So select squash and merge push the button, remove all of that here, we don't actually need it, just let's call it app image, and then uh, press confirm squash and merge. Now being merged and I can now delete the patch one branch, delete branch. Now what this has done is if I now go to my fork here of the project, I see that this branch is one commit ahead of the master branch. And with this one commit I can now do the pull request against the original repository. This is very cool because as you can see now there is just one commit that includes all my changes that I need to make and I want to create, yes I want to create this pull request. Now for the pull request of course we want to include a description of what this is and what it does and um, usually for this I just used a template that's also provided on the Linux deploy queued page. If we go back to the Linux deploy queued start page down here right below the example of using Linux deploy queued with Travis CI there is also a little boilerplate text for sending github pull requests. Uh, let's just copy this, paste it in here, and um, yeah, uh, let's also explain that um, test builds of the Avogadro app image are available for download at and then Let's see. Uh, why? Okay, are available here. Let's copy that URL in. By the way, initially I did a mistake. Uh, I used Travis underscore token in the initial description when in fact it needs of course to be GitHub underscore token. Just a little bug in this video. So now let's create the pull request. And here we go. Uh, in the official Avogadro project there is now a pull request that explains what an app image is and how to merge this. And as part of this pull request we see just one commit that does everything that is needed. And now essentially we should watch the space here for any comments from the upstream application developers. And hopefully soon the Avogadro project will have an official app image.